We're gonna pick food. This food's a really good one. So we're gonna hit that. We're gonna hit submit. Look at that. Look at the detail. That is unbelievable. It's almost hard to imagine that that's not even real. Yo, what's up my fellow creatives? It is time for another mid journey tutorial. Today, I'm going to jump in and show you guys the newest version of my mid journey prompting training. Now, this prompting training is something I've done before and I am making an update based on 5.2. So we're gonna talk about mid journey 5.2. If you haven't used this yet, this is an amazing update where they made some really profound changes. So I wanted to update you guys as to this and I'll try to get through this as quickly as possible. What I'll probably have you guys do because I'm gonna go through some of these parts very quickly is if you don't know the fundamentals, I'm probably gonna brush over these real quick because I've made many videos about that. So go back and look at my previous videos which we'll link up above. So go ahead and jump into it. All right, so the first thing is what is mid journey? We're gonna skip through that today. Setting up an account, that's a, another fundamental thing. Initial settings, we're gonna revisit that because some of the settings have changed. The prompting frameworks, I'm gonna revisit that briefly. And then the new image prompting along with the reference image prompting, combining an image prompt, and then the Q and A. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna to talk to you about the problem. So we'll skip through this real quick. You guys already know these case studies. So here's some examples of one of the examples that I use for social media graphics. I use mid journey. This was made with mid journey. This image was made with mid journey and it fits my brand. You can see totally different images, but totally on brand. Here's a good image for ad image creation. Here's another image for a product mock-up. I'm going to talk about this a lot more today. Doing product mock-ups inside of mid journey is really neat. You could pick a girl. I told it to do a redheaded girl, which I'm going to show you guys doing logo design concept mock-ups. Uh, this is for tech company app icon mock-ups. This is really fun. Game design mock-ups are called crisp and clear and neat. That is, I'm going to show you guys the stylized function thumbnail designs you guys may have seen some of my thumbnails where I'm using AI now to do some of my thumbnail designs at least the background images and blog image thumbnails so now that I've gone through that I want to show you some of the limitations real quick it can't create readable text you guys may already know this readable text is not possible in mid journey at least not now it kind of doesn't lorem ipsum style kind of jumbled text you may be able to see that in some of the images I'm creating number two you can't replicate an exact person I've got a little trick that I'm gonna show you guys that I learned from Matt Wolf. You guys can incorporate, and then we'll do that here later in the video. And then you can't create anything, including gore, violence, or sexual content. So this is really important. Now, the account setup. You guys already know this, midjourney.com. You create your account, you add it, you go to the midjourney bot, and you add that to your own server. So you wanna create your own server. That's a really important piece. And then the settings. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit forward slash settings on the little midjourney box. Let me go show you real quick what that looks like. So all I have to do is hit forward slash settings, click that, you hit enter. That's gonna pull up in all the settings. Now you can see here, I'm using the latest version 5.2, which is awesome because they made some changes, but these are the settings that you want. Now, if you put it in relaxed mode, it's gonna go slower, but you're gonna have a lot lot of images you can create without running out of credit. So I would recommend this. If you're going to be using mid journey constantly to try to learn and create a bunch of products, you're going to go a little bit slower, but you're going to get a lot more credits. If you want to create just high quality images and you're not going to be doing a ton, I think you get a couple hundred with their one of their plans. You can use fast modes. Something I wanted to cover with you guys real quick that I think is really important. All right. So let's jump over to the next step. Go over here to the slideshow again. All right, so the next thing is these settings that I showed you guys here. This is what I have set up on mine. And then you can see your best version 5.2, base quality, style, medium, public mode. You can upgrade your account and put it into stealth mode. I have not done that myself, but I'm not worried about anybody seeing my images. It's really not that big of a deal, especially since I have them inside of my own server. If they were in the public server where you can see all the other people's Discord images, then it would be a bigger deal, but you can actually keep these public. I wouldn't worry about it. And then the remix mode, you wanna have this turned on. And fast mode, like I said, if you wanna do slow, mode you can and you'll get a lot more credits a lot more images out of your monthly plan all right so now the new features they now have shorten describe zoom out pan blend weird and turbo and weird isn't like built in like the rest of them you'll see that's why there's no forward slash there and then there's turbo and very i'm going to try to go through all of these i may not be able to get through all of them today but i'm going to try to go as in-depth as i possibly can this is what i call the ultimate prompting framework you guys have seen this before probably if you haven't this is what's going to break it down so you have a basic prompt, which I'm gonna show you today, and then I'm gonna show you a little bit more of an advanced prompt. First one here is color-coded, your media quality. You wanna focus on what is it? Is it a worn witting? is it professional, is here, or is it expert? Those are usually the three things that I use at the beginning of all my prompts. Helps me out a lot, helps me kind of decipher what it is. Then from there, you're gonna pick the image type. So you're gonna do photography, illustration, graphic design, vector sticker design, artwork, vector illustration, photographic, portraits, sketches, product photography, cartoons, backgrounds, pencil drawings, poster designs, business card designs, billboard designs, 
And you can see I didn't even put in here product mockups, right? So that's another one that we can have in here is 16. Then you're going to put your person, place, or thing, the object. What is the center focus point of the image? What location is it at or where is it? And then what are they wearing? You can put a lot of detail into your prop description. This is where you're going to add a lot of your personalization, which is going to make your image very, very unique. Now, the next piece is you're going to pick your art style. There's a lot of really neat art styles, and I'll show you a couple examples here over on mid journey, but I got 20 of them just right here to show you some of those art examples. So if you look here, this is one that I'm working on right now. This is an octopus kind of looks like a metal poster, which is super cool. An ocean creature surrounded by sea creatures in the dark purple, hyper realistic animal illustrations, curve linear, nightscape, infinity nets, Lovecraftian power symbolism. Now keep in mind, you can see here that I did not come up with this prompt myself. This is something I reiterated and had mid journey come up with by using the describe feature, which I'm going to show you guys here in just a minute. So if you check this out, I'm going to show you a couple other ones. So you can see here, here's another one that I did octopus swimming in the ocean. An octopus swimming in the ocean. Let me go back a little a little further. Professional giant sage green octopus with glowing white spots and long tentacles. Top view under the water and half above the water with big wit crashing waves and bright night sky. Stars and full moon cinematic 4K hyper detailed. And you can go 32K if you want. And then the aspect ratio of 16.9. This is really neat. You can see there's kind of a light in there. This one is really cool. The one it came up with on this one was like my favorite. Like this guy right here is freaking rad, especially with all the lights underneath. This one's probably my favorite. So let's just upscale that one just to show you guys an example. Here's my purple ones that I'm working on. These ones are really neat. You can see here dark octopus. I've made these guys look really dark. But here is the describe feature. So let me show you guys how that works. So here's describe. You're going to go there and you're going to open up an image. Now I'm going to go over to my mid journey art. So let me just go into here, a Dropbox mid journey. There we go. Mid journey art. Now I'm going to pull open one of my existing images that I've already created. You guys can kind of get a sneak peek at some of the ones that I've made. Let me just show you guys icons. And so you can see here, there's one recent one I did that was a pastel style artwork of beautiful, happy, beautiful brunette, All right? That, that one's right on the money. Here's one of a lifestyle emotion, cute redheaded girl product mock-up, fashion mock-up. And I'll show you guys the prompt for that one here in just a minute. I have these mushroom characters, which are really cool. It's like they're going to fight a, a military battle. I thought of a movie you could come up with that are saving humanity. And then when stuff really goes bad, they call in the big boys and these guys come in to help save the world. Kind of like Transformers, but all mushrooms. How cool would that be? Right? Pretty fun. And then here's another one. So let's just take one that's simple. I want to pull one up that I think is kind of fun. And it's just one image instead of having multiple images in one how about we pick how about this one we're gonna pick food this food's a really good one so we're gonna hit that we're gonna hit submit you just hit the enter on your keyboard and watch what happens here boom it just gave me four different variations and even a style so now i've kind of learned this specific style who this is describe this for one of the gourmet meat burritos on a board in the style of tokina with another style that we can add to our list. F-Stop 2.8 Pro DX2, dark maroon, light green, Polish folklore motifs, Norwegian nature, layers surface. Now what I can do is there's a feature I can try each one of these. We can try one, we could try number two, number three, or number four, or we could just hit imagine all. Now this is really fun because it'll give you four different variations of this image and you'll be able to kind of create some, some different looks. So let's go ahead and see what this pops out. All right, there we go. So what do you guys think about that? Look at that. I think that did an even better job than the original. Look at how much detail, how crisp this is. This is just unbelievable. That one looks really yummy. Something about that. That one looks really good, and this one looks really good. I think this one looks the more, most realistic, and I love the candles. I don't know what the heck this thing is coming out of the top. So we're going to go ahead and we can either Photoshop that out. This one's cool. It looks like it's got avocado sticking out. I really like this one, actually. So we're going to go ahead and upscale number two. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. And these other ones are great, too. Look at all the fresh fruits and vegetables that are around this one. How cool is that? Look at a charcuterie board was one that it did with some meats on it. Okay, so now that we've done this, I want to show you guys something that we can do now. So we can vary this. Let's see. We're going to go ahead and very strong. And I can come into here and I can put stylize 1000. Here we go. I put stylize 1000 on this. Now watch what happens. Remember I did very strong. So this is going to be dramatically different. This could be crazy. This could end up being really weird looking, but we're just going to see what happens when you put stylize in there. I think this did a really good job by itself. Like I, I like this image. I would use this for 
a client, put some text in here, or, you know, just, there's just so much that you can do with this. It's such a beautiful image. But we're going to see what happens when you put stylized 1000. Now, remember this can vary from 100 to 1000. The closer it is to 100, the more standard it's going to be, the more simple it's going to be. And if you go up to 1000, wow, look at that. Look at the detail. That is unbelievable. It's almost hard to imagine that that's not even real. Like this is incredible. Like that one right there. That's the money maker right there. Either that one or this one. This one I feel like looks the most real because it's got the burn marks, the broccoli. I mean, this is just done so phenomenally well. That's what happens when you do 1000. Let's try this one more time and we'll go stylize on here. So we'll go dash dash stylize 100. Let's see, just show you the difference. I really love what this thing does with food. It's pretty phenomenal. All right, so now you can see here's 1000, right? Really good. And here's 100. Still great, but not quite as prominent and, and as extravagant as the other one. It really stylized this one. This one went all out. I mean, look at the board and the details and the reflections and the candles and everything in the background, all this greenery. And you look at this and this is good too. This is definitely good, but it's a lot more faded. There isn't as much detail inside of this one. I really like this one. I think this is a good one to use. I would use this, but they're both great. So either way, you're going to get a good quality food image out of this thing. So jumping back over to the art style, you just got to pick what art style you want. I could change that whole food image and make it a watercolor sketch, Charlie Harper, Jim Henson style, um, all these 3D renders. One of my favorite ones here is the 90s point and click 16 bit adventure game. You guys should try that one out. Just give it a shot. Try out that one and tell me what you guys think down in the comments. All right. So now that you've done that, we're going to jump over to the next step, which is the stylize. So now that you've done the art style, you can then stylize your images with highly detailed, ultra realistic, abstract, whimsical, dreamscape, CGI, fantasy. There's too many to kind of go through here, uh, but you can see here I got 25 that I listed and I'm sure there's way more. If you're ever curious and you want to learn about other styles and other ones that people have made, other prompts that they're using, just go over here to the mid journey to the main place and just look at some of the ones that people are doing. Come down here to general, general one, general two, general three, and you can start looking at some of the other prompts. People are doing model wearing a long Chanel style, hot couture dress, right? Like look how crazy that one is. Look at this pirate one, the captain of the pirate ship and his sailors back view, backlight, impressionism, 8k HDR. That's a pretty phenomenal image. So this will give you a lot of inspiration. This one is gorgeous. That one did a really good job. Wow. See what I'm talking about? So get inspiration from other people's stuff over here on mid journey. This is a video game style, like comic book style. I think that's really nice. High detail. This is that dress one. Some people do prompts that will blow your mind. You should see some of these like this one's really neat, but there's some prompts that are so long. I was going to try to find one that was like really, really long just to kind of show you guys an example. Let's see. So this one's pretty long. Like look how much, how long these prompts they got full shot F.8. So this is the f-stop how much blur you're going to want in the background they're trying to make this look like a realistic photography scene that somebody did right so this is just an example look at this this is really neat now let's jump over to the next thing all right so first is lighting at half rear lighting backlight which you saw in that last image it was in the mid journey channel natural lighting long exposure soft box incandescent moody lighting cinematic studio lighting soft lighting volumetric lighting beautiful lighting there's so many cool things in here different types of lighting that you can implement and try then there's chaos. I don't have time to go into this because this will be a really long video if I do, but you could add some chaos to your image and that can just basically gives mid journey the freedom to kind of add some craziness to it and can make it really, really abstract. Negative prompts are really important. So if you want to take something out of an image, like let's just say you wanted to say no hat, you could do a dash dash at the very end of the prompt and put no hat and it'll take that hat out, which is really cool. It may not do a perfect job, but that's something that you should definitely be learning about is the negative prompting, how to remove certain things from the image. The next thing here is the aspect ratios. As you can see here, these are supposed to be dashes. It's dash, dash, right? If I separate this, let me go in here. I don't know why it does that. See, it like tries to auto-correct it and then doesn't show me, but this is dash, dash, AR. So you have 16, nine or nine, 16, five, four or four, five. And it just works all the way throughout that. So that's something you're going to do at the end. And then there's that stylized that I showed you. It's actually going to be stylized 100. We move this out through stylized 1000. Whoops. You go back to that 1000 and stylized 100. And you can go anything in between. It can be 500, 650, 900. So it's really important that you try out some different ones and see what works best for you. So here's some examples. Here's an award-winning artwork of a beautiful brunette standing in front of the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge wearing a white dress. 
oil painting, ultra, and see, I color coded these. Ultra realistic, highly detailed, whimsical, cinematic, 32K, extremely well made, which I love this prompt. I think that's a good one. Volumetric lighting, beautiful lighting, and backlight. And then the chaos of 20, which I added a little bit of chaos to it. Aspect ratio of 16.9. And then no fog because San Francisco can be pretty foggy. I didn't want it to have any fog. So I made sure that I do a negative prompting out of that. If I wanted to, I could go dash dash stylize, right? And I could go 100 and add that to the prompt. And that would change up that prompt. But for this video, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So the image that it gave me was this. As you can see, it did a pretty good job. There's the Golden Gate Bridge behind it. But there's also like a Brooklyn Bridge looking thing behind there. And if you guys want to actually see... The final image I can show you guys here in my mid-journey art. Mid-journey, there we go, mid-journey art. And let me show you guys here, make this full screen. Did some funny ones here. I'm gonna show you guys how to do stuff like this here in a minute. Here we go. This is what I ended up turning out. Oil painting, Golden Gate Bridge, beautiful. Like I can see this being on a canvas, really, really cool. Some exotic cars, chicken nuggets. But just wanted to show you guys that real quick because I think that's really fun. Another example is a reference prompt is the imagine prompt. So not uh, reference image prompt. So you can use a reference image. So you put an image URL in there. And how you do that is you can upload a URL. So I could just take this one just as an example, or I could upload an image so I can upload file. All right, so we're gonna upload this one. We're gonna enter, we're gonna go image, imagine. What I'm gonna need to do is grab this guy again, copy image address. Okay, I'm gonna pick this one here, paste that there, give it a space on the space bar. Come back over here, hit copy. When I come back in here, hit paste. Under chaos, that one's got too much space. That's what happened there. So you wanna make sure you get that right. Dash, dash, stylize. We'll come back in here to 250, and then we'll go like this. Let's see what happens. I'm totally mixing this image with this guy, and I don't know what it's going to come up with. It might be weird, but we're just going to see how you can use it a reference image. Maybe it's going to create a blue suit or a blue dress for her, or maybe it's going to put this guy in a dress. I don't know. The mystery is going to be really interesting to see. Oh my goodness. I don't recommend this. This is where you're going to get some crazy stuff. One of these images looks okay, but I'm going to have to send this to Keith because he's going to laugh. I took a woman and a man. And I used them as a reference image. So what he would look like if he was a woman, maybe. So you can hear shaved head on the side. Looks like an MMA fighter or something. Oh my God. Yeah, this is a little disturbing. I wouldn't recommend this, but you can see it put a suit on her. Um, yeah, so just going to show you, this does pretty decent with a reference image. <laughs> it's pretty funny. All right, so let's go back over. Let me show you the next thing here. So the next one is using a reference image too, which is I did this image with my wife. And I asked it to do the prompt of that beautiful woman in the white dress in front of there. And this is what it came up with. So you can see here, this is really cool how it took a reference image of her that I uploaded. I copied the URL, pasted it in, pasted that same prompt in there, and it gave me this. Now, like I showed you before, it's not exact, but it's very, very close. The next one is combining an image. So you would do the same thing. You take an image URL and take another URL and you would just hit enter. You don't need to add a prompt. You can if you want to, but you just take the two URLs from two different images and you hit submit which is what I did here, and it created this for me, which I thought it created and looked even better. Now, then you're gonna go out here and you're gonna do the final image export. How you're gonna do that is you're gonna hit this here, right? Let me just go in here. I wanna export that one that I showed you I thought was really neat with Stylize 1000. So this is the one that I really liked. I thought it was really good. I love the angle of it. I love the lights behind it. So we're gonna go ahead and export that one. We're gonna upscale number two, which is that one is. Okay, and then we're gonna come back, to, back down here. You're gonna see here, Boom, this is your final image. Now do Mid Journey a favor. Wow, look at the detail. Do Mid Journey a favor and love this image. This is gonna tell them that this is a good quality image, which it absolutely is. You're gonna hit save image as, and you're gonna come in here, you're just gonna hit that and you're gonna hit save and you're gonna be good to go there. Now I have one more trick. You got upscaling, which I showed you guys. You can do variations of it. There used to be a redo feature. I don't see that feature anymore. I should probably, let me see if this is still in here. Yeah, they've taken that feature out. You can zoom out, so it'd be cool to see what would happen if you zoomed out on this image. Let's do like a 1.5. But there used to be a redo function. This is the redo. So you can see here, if I roll over that, you can redo this image and try it differently. But in terms of what they used to have is light upscale, detailed upscale. It looks like they've gotten rid of that so far uh, from that. So I can take that, I can actually take that slide out of my presentation. Now that it's just, they just have variations. So here we go. Now that I, zoomed out we'll see what happens with those last images 
which will be interesting to see. And then the next thing I wanted to show you is a new little trick for an app that you actually have to, to install onto your mid-journey. So there's a thing called Insight Face Swap, right? So this is really neat. You wanna take a specific image and you're gonna upload it. So you're gonna hit forward slash S save ID. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a picture of somebody. We're just gonna take an image of me. We'll just use this one as an example. Okay, and I'm gonna name this image Adrian B3. Okay, I'm gonna save it. Now this is saved inside of Mid Journey. Okay, I've trained this Mid Journey with this bot. You can go download Insight Face Swap, which is really cool. Did the save ID. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna hit swap ID. There we go. I'm gonna do Adrian B3 and then I'm gonna upload an image in here. So let's find another image of another person. And what we'll do is actually just go into the Mid Journey art We'll find a picture of a person here that we did and we'll switch this out. We'll switch my face for this person's face. So let's find a cool person's face. How about we go to, I don't have a ton of, look at this one. Okay, well, let's try this one. Let's go here, click this guy. This is what I did for a LinkedIn event. Now we're gonna hit enter. Oops, here we go, enter. And watch what happens. In just a matter of a few seconds, it took my face and put my face in there pretty wild. Now it's not perfect on the hairline. You'd probably want to use your brush tool, your clone stamp tool to fix the hairline. Cause I do have more of a widow's peak in my hair, but, and I'd want to fix my ears. I'd probably bring my ears in a little more, a little smaller. I do have ears that kind of stick out a little bit, but you can see here, it did a pretty darn good job better than anything else I've seen. Uh, so I'm actually going to save this and probably Photoshop it. Let's see here. Save image as, okay. And it does use credits, so you're gonna need to, to buy some credits or you're just gonna have to wait. Look and see, I can, I've can i already used three out of my 50, but this is really cool. Pixie, P-I-C-S-I dot A-I. Looks like that's the URL to get there. Um, they have a Patreon, they have other features, but this is a really cool little bonus I wanted to show you guys in terms of putting your face on other people's faces. This is thanks to Matt Wolf. I'm probably gonna use this for a thumbnail once I kind of clean this up, get the hairline right pulling it in from here just to finish this up, fix the ears a little bit. I'll bring them in uh, with my warp tool, with liquify tool. And yeah, that's what I got for you guys. So let's just go over here and make sure I haven't forgotten anything. We covered a lot in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to be doing a lot more mid journey stuff. I'm using it a lot to take that existing concepts, logo concepts and all the stuff I showed you and to put my own personality and spin on it. This is just a base. This is not the final product. So if you guys want more tutorials like this, Drop a comment down below and let me know. God bless you guys. Hope you have an amazing day. And as always, keep looking up.